Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the uh, Circa Millions contest for week four um, and reviewing what happened in week three. And again, for those of you that are watching this for the first time, uh, I hope you're not expecting my opinions on who I like against the spread. That's really what, not what this is about. I mean, in this Circa Millions contest, and the goal of this is not to beat the bookmaker. The goal is to beat you know thousands of people. Um, so again, the concept behind this is not necessarily to figure out who's going to cover, but figuring out who everybody else is going to take, um, and, and try to fade them. Um, the, the, the assumption that the NFL lines are very liquid and very efficient is probably an assumption that I'm willing to eat, uh, much, gr <laughs> much more, uh, clearly than the assumption that I can beat the spread myself. So. Um, we're, we're learning pretty much every week about how this works. And, and one of the reasons why I'm, I'm challenging myself to do these videos every week is to keep myself sharp in, in learning this stuff because I don't expect to win. But again, I just ex always expect to learn and you know increase my chances of winning in the future as well. So again, what we're, how we gauge success in this is yes, I mean, how we actually do is, is terrific. But what we're really trying to accomplish is is making sure that we pick low owned teams. Um, and if we are doing that, then in, in, in theory, <laughs> we're doing well. Now I actually ended up going, I think two and three last week, um, but I, I don't care about that. What I'm more interested in is, is what the results were ownership wise of, of our teams, because we put a lot of work into figuring that out. You know, um, we, we do, and we'll talk about this week as well. We talked about particular spreads that we're attacking, particular spots that we attack, as far as knowing where the public is going to end up. And let's look at who we ended up picking last week. And we're, I'm, I couldn't be happy. Um, so first of all, we took the Giants plus the 10 and a half on Thursday. And you'll see that of all of the teams, they were one of, if not the lowest owned team of the entire board. And this is just seems to be the case that every Thursday night game, nobody likes to pick. Um, so we're just going to keep doing that pretty much every week. Um, the, uh, the other teams we picked, we picked uh, the Jets. And they were, I think, with the exception of the Thursday game, they were the second lowest owned team on the board. Okay. Actually, that's not true. We'll get, get to the second lowest in a second. They lost, but whatever. We took the Cardinals and we thought, I thought that was like the easiest pick of them all. And they were actually the lowest owned team on Sunday. So, and they, had, they actually ended up winning the game outright, but forget what the result was. Extremely strong result as far as our analysis goes. And also we took the Chiefs, excuse me, the Bears, and the Bears were one of the lowest owned teams on the board as well. And they got run out of the building, but you know, that's the way it goes. Now the other one that I took, and this is this is is really causing me to rethink my 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 process here, are the Panthers. All right, so they lost whatever, but they were picked by a thousand and forty eight people. And one of the concepts that I talked about when analyzing who I think the public is going to be on were these key number spreads. My thesis going into this season or going into all seasons is that people like to take teams that are laying less than that key number by a little bit. Like people love to take teams laying the two and a half. They love to take teams laying the six and a half. What they're not interested in doing is taking the teams plus the two and a half or plus the six and a half. And likewise, you know, we, we, we also talk about um, uh, the concept of the public playing teams that are favorites, uh, that, that they're at home. We also talk about uh, the public liking teams that are just kind of well known that have like they're just good teams from reputation with good players as opposed to just bad teams. Um, and some of these theses are planning out perfectly, playing out perfectly, and some are really, really suffering. Like the just play people don't like to play bad teams. That that's just like a gold mine every week. Like the Giants, nobody plays them any week. Nobody plays the Cardinals every week. Okay. They just love to play these teams like the Chiefs and, and you know what I mean? And, and the Patriots, they just love to play the Patriots. No one ever wants to play the Jets, right? Because they were a quote unquote bad team. Um, 
But the six and a half point spread thing as proving at least for at least the first three weeks to be completely fraudulent, my 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 concept. Because every single week I played these six and a half point underdogs, they're just flooded. And, and look at this past week. You had the Broncos, they were plus six and a half, like a zillion people took them. You had the Panthers plus six and a half, a zillion people took them. You had the Commanders plus six and a half, and, and they were one of the highest owned on the whole slate. You know, so I'm, I'm rethinking this, not to mention the box plus five, which is close to six and a half. So I'm going to consider my theory about the six and a half point spread thing in it, at, the, at, at best in serious jeopardy. And at worst, maybe just 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 a terrible take by me, you know, that maybe the public just does not prefer those those that does not have that same predisposition to playing six and a half point favorites, you know. So so I'm going to consider that very heavily as I go through this this week. So overall, even though I only went two and three, whatever it is, we really were able to pick some low teams and we learned a lot about, I think, about how the public kind of behaves. So let's take a look at this week and see. Um, uh, and see what looks good. Now, again, we don't really have the official spreads out. They'll be out probably in an hour, but I don't think it really matters too much. Let's take a look at these. And again, we're trying to identify what? Uh, bad teams. And we say that in quotes because, you know, bad's relative, whatever, but teams are just perceived as bad. We're trying to avoid teams that are perceived as good. We're trying to avoid home teams. We're trying, and we're still trying to avoid those those two and a half point favorites. Okay, the six and a half point ones, I don't know. Um, so let's just start, first of all, with the Thursday game because we have to play the Thursday game. It's the lowest owned game on the slate. So we have to do something here. And when we look at this, uh, you do have the Lions only a two point uh, uh, favorite. So people might be inclined to do that. But on the other hand, Gr Green Bay as a home dog might be enticing to people. And also Detroit is still kind of known as a kind of a weak team, even though they're not bad. So I really don't have an opinion on which way the public's going to go on this, but it doesn't matter because I have to pick someone because they're both going to be low on. So in the absence of anything else, we're going to go with the plus two theory um, just because I think it's the one theory that it's least holding at least. And I have no other lead either way, but I have to pick one of these because it's just going to be low on. So we're going to go with the Packers for sure. Uh, Jacksonville minus three. Again, we can't play this because any spread that's right around three, that's literally on three, it's just way too prone to push. And we just can't involve pushes in this in this contest. Um, Buffalo minus two and a half against Miami. So a couple of things going for us here if we want to take Miami. Number one, Buffalo is viewed as a good team. Um, and the spread is two and a half. So people could be thinking, wow, I get to take Buffalo minus only two and a half. Problem is that Miami is everybody's darling as well. So uh, this game is probably going to get action on both sides. Probably going to be a high owned game. Uh, I'm just, I want nothing to do with it. Uh, Eagles, Eagles commanders. So the commanders are viewed as kind of bad. They just got basically shut out by Buffalo last week and Philly's everybody's kind of favorite. So just in general, I think the commanders are a good play. Um, now the problem is again, is this eight point spread thing, which, which normally would bother me, you know, because you would think that people would be afraid to lay the eight with, with, with Philadelphia. But I think this, the seven point that theory I have is probably very suspect. So, in the absence of anything else, I think the commanders are going to be solid circuit play here. I don't think they're, I think they're going to be pretty low owned. So, uh, Washington plus eight, I, I like that. So, so far, the uh, line, excuse me, Packers and, and commanders. Um, Minnesota minus four and a half against Carolina. So, Carolina looked miserable last week. Um, Minnesota played a good game against the Chargers. Uh, good enough. They're in a four and a half point favorite on the road. People don't like to play road teams, but like, but, but Carolina's just viewed as really bad, you know? So, so it's possible that Carolina is a candidate play. I, again, even though it's boy, the four and a half points, normally I would like this a little bit more, 
But again, that that six and a half to four and a half point spread thing, I'm a little fishy on. If I have nothing else, I'll play Carolina, but I prefer to find something different. But certainly not play Minnesota here. Either Carolina or nothing. But we'll see what else shows up. Cincinnati minus two and a half against the Titans. Um, Cincinnati's a team that everybody still kind of likes to play. Uh, Tennessee, everybody sort of hates. The spread is only two and a half. Now, it'd be nice if, if Tennessee were on the road because then, you know what I mean? I don't mean that it'd be nice if they were on the road because then getting only two and a half would be like a disaster. But the fact is, is that is that Tennessee has got to be low owned in this spot. Cincinnati just came off a win on, on national TV. Um, and I think Tennessee's got to be a pretty decent spot in Circa as well. Um, so, so far, we're looking at Carolina, Tennessee, Washington and 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 uh, Green Bay. Let's see if we can't find anything better though. Uh, Cleveland only three points. Just it's just a bad line. You can't bet into these push lines. Pittsburgh against Houston. So this one I think I'm interested in because first of all, you have the, the good spread, right? The plus two and a half is something you want you want to go after. Um, the other thing is that even though Houston's at home, even though Houston just beat Jacksonville, that they're just viewed as a bad team. And Pittsburgh is just so freaking popular every week. Everybody just loves to play Pittsburgh. And they uh, and they are coming off of a win against the Raiders. So I think Houston plus two and a half is viable as well. Now, these are more home teams than I'm usually used to taking. Um, but we only can go with, what, with the board that we have. So we'll put them on the list. So Titans... Texans, Panthers, that's three home dogs. Commanders for, and then uh, Green Bay, unless something else eclipses them. Then we have to make choices. Colts, I mean, it's a minus one. There's nothing really particularly interesting about this. Probably have people on both sides of this. Really not interested. Uh, Saints, three and a half against the Bucks. Um um, I don't really feel any real public lead here. You know, I, again, at three and a half points, people are usually nervous to lay the three and a half. So maybe Saints might be lower owned than normal, but Tampa's look pretty bad. So I think this game is probably a stay away as far as circuit goes. Uh, Broncos Bears, I mean... I don't know who in their right mind is going to play the Broncos on the road laying three and a half to the Bears. Um, I know the Bears have been bad, but Broncos have been really bad. And the Broncos have lost two games at home, and they're just coming off 70-point loss. Who on earth is going to play Denver and lay the three and a half here? Uh, I think this is a very, very strong play in Serga. This has got to be really low owned, no? The only thing that I'm going against, it again, is that Chicago is just really bad. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to include Denver. It make, makes life hard because now I have six candidate plays. So Denver minus three and a half on the road. Uh, okay. So this is one I'll probably learn from. So chargers five and a half against the Raiders under normal circumstances. Again, I would have made the Raiders kind of an auto play here, you know, because this five and a half six point thing seems like a real thing, but so far this is, it's just not been the case. Okay, so uh, I'm going to probably stay away from this. Uh, San Francisco, Carolina uh, against Arizona. Uh, I think Arizona in general is is a good is a good play this week because they are considered a bad team. San Francisco is considered a good team. Only thing is two things. Number one, Arizona is coming off of a win against Dallas, and you know as 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 weird as it is to say, I don't want to play a 14 point spread because that can push. Um, a decent, you know, a, a non-zero amount of the time, really. So uh, I'm probably just going to stay away from this one. Dallas, New England, again, under normal circumstances. Again, I would say that this is like a, a clear play here. You know, New England plus the six and a half. You know, it's that six and a half point line. You get to play Dallas, you know, minus the, you know, uh, minus only six and a half. Thing is, Dallas is coming off the loss. Um so maybe they're gonna not, you know, not be as popular as 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 otherwise. And New England is a team that people like to play. So I'm probably gonna stay off of this one. Uh Chiefs, Jets. Um 
yeah, this one seems like you, something you have to do. I mean, the Jets are just miserable, and the Chiefs are just nuts. And everybody loves playing the Chiefs, and everybody hates playing the Jets. So the Jets have to be considered a good uh, and then on Monday night, Giants Seahawks, um, just no. I mean, just no interest there. So what do we have? We have some some plays to have to we have to sift through here. So the Chiefs, very. I mean, Jets got to be really strong. Okay, I mean, who who can play the who can play anybody against the Chiefs right now? Much less the Jets. Um, I'll tell you, man, if the Patriots and the Raiders win this week, I'm going to be so steamed for getting off the six and a half point thing. But the, it's it's not just that. I can't worry about it if they win. I'll put it to you another way. If the Patriots and the Raiders end up low owned this week, I'm going to be really mad for not having played. And But we'll readjust again. Um, I like the Broncos, minus three and a half um, on the road. Who, who on earth can play then? The – Steel, uh, the Texans plus the two and a half. I like that. Titans plus the two and a half. I like that. Carolina plus the four and a half. I like that. Commanders. I like that. And somebody in the Green Bay. I'm gonna pause this for a second. Sorry about that. So I, you can count on me having uh, the the Packers. I mean, excuse me, uh, the Packers again, only because I just know this game is gonna be low owned, and the others have to come from. You know, four of those other five, you know, um, I'm just not sure what's going to be. But that's the process of going through this. And we're going to judge next week to see which of these were low owned. Uh, that'll do it.